Hello everybody, welcome to the presentation on Fusobacteria. So the previous video we discussed about the uh, phylum of bacteria which is the Dinococcus thermus and you can refer to the previous video by clicking on a link which will be present over here saying that click and check out the previous video and all that. You can click it. Now to talk about Fusobacteria, the shape of Fusobacteria, start with the shape of Fusobacteria. So Fusobacteria generally have an enlarged r rod type of shape okay so you can see the shape over here in this image it depicts the shape, shape very well okay and they are obviously the gram negative bacteria so they will have an outer structure like this with two cell membranes and one cell wall in between okay so that is the gram negative bacteria structure of gram negative bacteria so now let us see more Fusobacteria are obligately anaerobic. So actually, Fusobacteria is a phylum which complies, comprises of two families, which is the Leptotricaceae and Fusobacteriaceae. So in the family Fusobacteriaceae, we find the obligately anaerobic organisms. And in the family Leptotricaceae, we find a mixture of obligately anaerobic, anaerobic and aerobic bacteria. And mostly we find aerobic bacteria also there and that is uh, one point and another point can be that this type of bacteria the common inhabitants of the oral cavity so it can be oral cavity of humans oral cavity of rodents as we will see in the later examples and mostly they are uh, inhabitants of the oral cavity in general not to specify only humans or primates or anything okay so this type of bacteria physiobacteria can be classified or it can it has been found to comprise of this following features that they are sometimes pathogenic and they are sometimes commensal. So pathogenic can be examples can be strepto uh, streptobacillus ammoniliformis and another example can be fusobacterium necroforum and what are the diseases they cause so we will see what are the diseases they cause so diseases they cause can be tissue necrosis uh, okay so tissue necrosis septicemia it is caused by this bacteria Fusobacterium necroforum so this tissue necrosis is the uh, deadening or the rotting of tissues septicemia is rotting of the area where we have uh, suppose we have got a cut on the skin somewhere so that cut will not heal very quickly and it will actually rot so that rotting is caused by this bacteria Fusobacterium necroforum okay and this was actually a very dreadful disease in the old days but now it is under control this uh, this type of bacteria also cause intraamniotic infections such as premature labor and tropical euclers so euclers are actually a swollen area or we call it cow in hindi okay so this type of euclers can be present in the skin or in the mouth as they are common inhabitants of the oral cavity as we studied so it can be present in the mouth or skin okay and to say oral cavity we I, I actually uh, to be more specific can say that it is actually a part of the oropharynx so we have three parts of the pharynx if we were not already knowing it that is the oropharynx nasopharynx first the nasopharynx then the oropharynx then the laryngopharynx and they are the common inhabitants on that location there the density of this organisms are found to be more but although they are not fixed to that location they can be found in other areas on the oral cavity as well but in the oropharynx anyways so these were the diseases caused by this type of bacteria and they are commensal also what do i mean by commensal commensalism is a category like the symbiotic relationship and the parasitism so let us discuss what is commensalism in brief so commensalism is where one organism works with the another with another organism without affecting the other organism in any way so when i say without affecting it is without helping it or without harming it as we can see in the symbiotic relationship two organisms work together with helping each other and in parasitism one organism comes or infects other organism and then they are actually harming the other organism but in commensal there is actually no such type of harming or helping but their presence or their working together is essential one example can be that fusobacteria and spirochetes work together so spirochetes is another phylum of bacteria 
and they work together to cause the disease called the trench mouth so when they work together they are not actually harming or helping anybody but when they work together they can cause the disease trench mouth so that is an example a good example of commensalism in physiobacterium so this was about the physiobacterium uh, so now to talk about this pathogenic bacteria a little bit more detail that is the streptobacillus moniliformis is belo uh, belongs to the family leptotricaceae and fusobacterium necrophorum belongs to the family necro uh, sorry fusobacteriaceae and this causes another important disease which i forgot to mention over here is that it causes the lemures disease so let me spell it over here it causes a lemures disease lemures or Lemieux syndrome will be better Lemieux syndrome so what is this disease we just now studied that they are common inhabitants of the oral cavity and more specifically the oropharynx so when they are pathogenic in that area they can affect the nearby tonsils in the pharyngeal region and they can just infect there and keep on dividing and they actually bursts open or destroys the dorsal wall of the pharynx and infects the nearby regions so when they infect the nearby regions the one of the nearby region include the arteries and veins okay so when they try to infect the nearby regions they when they in infect the jugular vein which supplies or which drains the carbon dioxide or takes the carbon dioxide to the heart to the lungs for oxygenating that is the definition of a vein so when they infect the jugular vein in the neck region so they when they have to infect it that means they have to destroy the wall and they have to enter the jugular vein so when they try to enter it they destroy the wall obviously and when they uh, destroy the wall the function of the pla platelets kick on so platelets actually form a platelet plug over there and try to heal the wall when they are try trying to heal the wall due to the blood flow this platelet plugs or small portion of the platelet plugs can come out and cause atherosclerosis in other parts so that type of disease is called Lemieux's disease and another important disease is the rat bite fever or the hever heel fever so let us talk a bit about that also rat bite fever it is also called hever heel fever and it is not two diseases but these two diseases are caused by two different situ situations but these two diseases symptoms are actually the same and the affecting affecting pathogen is also the same that is the streptobacillus moniliformis so what happens in this disease is that you can see in from the name rat bite fever so it is spreading by the bite of rats so we know that it is again the common inhabitants of the oral cavity and this streptobacillus moniliformis is found in the oral cavity of rats or rodents so when some rodents bite and human or for that purpose any organism but we are focusing on humans so when that uh, a rat bites somebody the bacteria enters the body of the organism or the human or somebody's body and then they can cause this dreadful fever so what is the difference between haveril fever and the rat bite fever actually there is not much difference they are the same names of the same disease but they are caused by two different situations means this rat bite fever is caused as the name suggests by the bite of rodents or rat more specifically rat and the hever hill fever is caused by when people are getting the same bacteria or infected by the same bacteria due to other reasons other than rat bite because due to other reasons such as it is infecting through the medium of air or it is I infecting through the medium of food or uh, people are staying in close contact with rodents that why that's why that uh, pathogen is going to enter the body so such reasons we cannot call it rat bite fever anymore because they are, the rat is not biting anymore so that's why we call it hever hill fever so let me spell that as well hever hill fever so these are some important diseases and some important characteristics of fusobacteria fix fusobacteria so in the next video we will be going to discuss about gemanitodes which is the next in the list okay so that is also 
gram negative bacteria which we will discuss more in detail in the next video so you can click on the link over here to check out the next video and hope you like the video bye